At the time of the inauguration of the Mishkan, Aaron Akoyen gives the Jewish people a bracha. The question is, what bracha was it? Based on how Rashi explains it, we're going to see that Aaron's focus at this time is all about bringing the Shechina to dwell with the Jewish people. It has a great lesson for us in how we can contend with the darkness and challenges of living in our Golos world. In Pasuk, the Pasuk says that <coughs> Aaron lifted his hands and he blessed the Jewish people. And it says, He came down from having completed the Chattis, etc. Rashi takes the word and concentrates on it to explain on his Mephorish that it, what was the Brocha Birkas Kohanim. The Brocha Kohanim was good. And then Rashi tells us, Yoer Yisa. Where did Rashi get that from? The marker from the Pirish is via Shtepe B'Meforshe Rashi. As the commentaries on Rashi point out, Rashi is based himself on Torah's Kohanim and the Medrash Torah's Kohanim. And the Chama Mekayim is Beshas, in the various places throughout the Gemara, is Mavur, as from them Pasuk, Vayisa, Aaron, Esyad, of Goyim, and Vayavorachim, that it's from this Pasuk, Lem and of Kamadinim, and Birkas Kohanim, that we derive many of the practical details of the Halochas, of how Kohanim are supposed to bless the community, what we call Duchanim. Question is or Ramban. The question which the Ramban, who is also one of the commentators on the simple understanding of the Pasuk, so the Ramban raises this question, we'll ask the same question the same question. Rashi's Mikra. Rashi's objective is to explain the simplest understanding of the Pasuk. And the Kehanim, the instruction for the Kahanim to bless the Jewish people, which includes in the Psukim, Yivarechacha, Yoir Yisa, which Rashi has just quoted, was Rashi bring that up. State a spet in Pashas Nosai, something we don't yet know about. We're in Pasha Shmini. That's only going to be revealed in Pashas Nosai. And we came and learned like the Chapshat. If that's the case, how can the simple explanation of this pasuk mean as the Vayevorchem do that here the word Vayevorchem is given Birkas Kahanim is that he gave them the Kohen's bracha. The Kohen's bracha wasn't yet instructed. So how's the Pshat that he gave them the Kohen's bracha? So we mentioned the Ramban raises this question. The Ramban will us for inference. So the Ramban's suggested answer is as the parasha from Birkas Kohanim. That the parasha that includes Birkas Kohanim, which we're only going to read about in Nosei, despite being written in the Torah much later on, is Gizokt Givorim Free, was actually told to the Kohanim already before this, therefore the Brocha was available, and Aaron could have given that Brocha. It was already given as a verbal instruction before our Apostle. How do we know that? Because when you do look in Parashas Nasei at the parasha Birkas Kehanim, you'll see that straight after Birkas Kehanim, then it says, It describes the conclusion of putting up the Mishkan, which is obviously what our parasha is talking about. The eighth day of the inauguration of the Mishkan. So the Ramban, the Ramban wants to argue that it was a verbalized commandment before it was actually written in the Torah, and therefore the information was already not only known, but instructed to Aaron even before the story. That's great for the Ramban. It doesn't really work for Rashi. It'd be really difficult to suggest that Rashi also believes that it was a verbal instruction long before it was written down. Let's assume Rashi did believe that. Somewhere Rashi should have I mentioned as deep parasha from Birkas Kehanim that the instruction of Birkas Kehanim is the Torah in, in the Torah is nitli say dasmanim doesn't appear chronologically in the Torah, and then he could have said bring and dictum. Kalal could have quoted the well-known concept in muktam um uchar b'Torah that the Torah is not always in chronological order as Rashi does elsewhere. And if Seeing as Rashi doesn't mention the lack of chronology, so therefore we assume that Rashi actually thinks the instruction for Brikos Kahanim happens after our parasha. Then he should have given another explanation, which the Ramban offers, which is as that this brocha recorded here that Aaron gives the people is not Brikos Kahanim. Was not Brikos Kahanim because we don't know about Brikos Kahanim yet. It hasn't been told. Now a brocha stam was Aaron not given sheet and by him for endikins and avoided some extra mol. Rather, it was a generic brocha that Aaron Akoyan extended to the Jewish people when he completed his very first day of service in the Mishkan. And that would be quite similar actually to what Shlema Amelech did at the time where he inaugurated the, inaugurated the base Amigdash. He gave a generic brocha to the entire community. So maybe that's Rashi's view. 
So, Mephorishim Zogan, there are commentators on Rashi who suggest, as the Hechech Tzelen and as Vayivorech may into Birkas Kohanim, how does Rashi insist that the Brocha that Aaron gives over here is in fact Birkas Kohanim, despite the fact that we haven't yet been told Birkas Kohanim? Is from them, was Dohat plays Aaron gebenched in. Is from the fact that Aaron is the only person giving the Brocha in this particular section. On the start was from Moshe without Moshe's participation. And that is neat, wie de Brocha was wirklich gesagt gleich nach dem, which is different to the very next Brocha that the Torah records, where it says, Vaya voi Moshe ve Aaron gome vai vorche som, that Moshe and Aaron together bless the people. The fact that the Torah here separates this Brocha and says it's only Aaron lends itself to being Birkas Kehane. That's how the first one is explained. It is the von Verstandig, which would then make it easy to understand. As die Brocha hat gehat ascheiches nor to Aaron. That if it's a Brocha that only Aaron gave, then it must be a Brocha which is specific to Aaron. Und der Fahrer ist Aschen mit Fahrer ist das Dossig, wenn Birkas Kehane, which logically would lead Rashi to explain which Brocha is unique to Aaron. Birkas Kehane. Und mir ja chasche boi ba yom nischanich Aaron ba voida, because Aaron was now being initiated into service in the Mishkan, nischanich gam kem ben sias kapayim shehi ka voida, this would make then logical sense that it's also the day he is inducted into giving the bracha that a koyen gives because that's also similar to avoida that's why that's the time in davening where the koyenim give their brachas that's how the Mephoshim want to explain Rashi's interpretation because the Torah singles out a bracha by Aaron only problem is that's not so simple as the Brocha had gehat a shaykhaz dafka to Aaron. Yes, the fact that Aaron is the only person giving this Brocha indicates that the Brocha is somehow specifically linked to Aaron. It's not halt schwer zu sagen, as das ist Birkas Kohanim. Still would be difficult to say which Brocha is unique to Aaron in this context. Birkas Kohanim. Noisef al hanala se tzibay Birkas Kohanim shteit ashen pashas nasei. Besides the first issue we've already um, mentioned, which is, we don't know yet about Birkos Kohanim, it's only coming in Parshas Nase, but besides that, we have three other issues with the suggestion that because it's only Aaron giving the Brocha, therefore it must be Birkos Kohanim. Number one, Aleph. Let's go with the logic that says, Aaron is now being inducted into the role of blessing the Jewish people. Then the Torah should have said, Aaron, bless the people. In the same way as Moshe instructed Aaron with every other avoider that he had to do for the first time that day, there's no logic to say the first time he's giving Birkas Kahanan, which is a type of avoider, there's no direct instruction for it. Number two, blessing the Jewish people is a positive prerogative for every Kohen, not only Aaron. If in fact Aaron is giving them Brikas Kohanim because he is now required and being inducted into giving Brikas Kohanim, why do it alone? Where are his children? They also should be inducted into giving Brikas Kohanim. Or at the very least, they have a positive mitzvah, they should fulfill it. We do see that Aaron's sons participated in the other elements of inauguration into service in the Mishkan. Why would they not participate in Birkas Kehanim? And third issue with suggesting that this is Birkas Kehanim, Gimel, is Beshmini Lami Luyim Isech Moshe Geven HaKoyen. On that eighth day of inauguration of the Mishkan, Moshe still held the title of Kohen. Rashi already told us that. that on the eighth day of the inauguration of the Mishkan, all of them, Aaron, his sons, and Moshe, were all equally Kayanim. Yes, of course, our Moshe would not now be initiated into the role of giving Birkas Kayanim in the future because he would not be a coin from tomorrow. But why not at least participate in the one time that he could be like a coin blessing the Jewish people? Especially since Rashi's view is that Moshe actually did all the ordinary avoiders that day. Aaron did the special inaugural avoiders, but Moshe was the one who did the regular avoiders, so not Aaron. So, Actually, blessing the Yidden is a regular void and Moshe should participate. Therefore, it's quite difficult to suggest that the reason Rashi knows this is Birkas Koyanim is because it's spe specifically attributed to Aaron. 
Okay, before we explain that, let's look at what else Rashi says. After Rashi tells us that the brocha Aaron gave is Birkas Kohanim, is Rashi Moisif Kanal. As we mentioned, Rashi then spells it out that it's Yivorechecha Yo Er Yisa. It's Tamur. That's really strange. Vime Farsh and Fregan, as the commentaries all ask. Why does Rashi have to tell us what the words of Birkas Kohanim are? That's something clear. Even a child who isn't familiar with all of Chumash knows as Brikos Kahanim means Yivarechachal Yo Erius. He's been to Shul. He knows what Brikos Kahanim sounds like. He knows what the at least the first word of each section is. Why does Rashi have to tell us? Even if you want to say, and this would be quite a difficult answer to squeeze through, but let's assume as Rashi falosich do nit as the Talmud vase from them that for whatever reason Rashi is not. Convinced that the child knows the words of Birkas Kehanim. Because he hasn't actually encountered those words yet in Pashas Nosoi, which is still coming. Fine. So Rashi has to tell us which words. Then Rashi could have just said, etc. And, and you'll look it up, or you'll ask your father, and you'll find out as a child what the brach is. Why does Rashi have to tell us what the words are of the three brachas? Now, Mephoshim Far Enfren, there is an intriguing answer given by the Mephoshim, which will uh, relate to our explanation. That these three words, they each relate to one of the three karbonis that are being described at this point as part of the inaugural service. There was a chattas offering, an oil offering, and a shlomim offering. And it's actually quite easy to see the correlation because by part of the first bracha is that David will not only, only bless you, but will protect you as well. Which includes being protected from Averis, meaning that you won't have to bring a carbon chattas. So is related to the carbon chattas. Yo'er, the brach of illumination, is connected to Oila, represents the Oila offering. Oila is often brought as an atonement for inappropriate thoughts that didn't translate into actions. Which is an Avera involved with the intellect of a human being, which illuminates the experience of being human. Yo'er. And the last one is probably the easiest. The last part of Birkos Kahanim ends with the Brocha of peace. Is Keneged Shlomim. That obviously relates to the peace offering, which brings peace into the world. So that's how the Mephoshim align the three words <coughs> with the three Korbonas. On their fun lent when up as the brocha do is given nit kebirka shleman on birkas kehanim, and that would actually be a reason to prove to us that the brocha Aaron gave over here was not a generic brocha like Shlema Melech did at the time he inaugurated the, the Beis Hamikdash. Rather, it's specifically birkas kehanim. But after deep brochas and matim to the korbanos for stein do pasuk, because the words of birkas kehanim really dovetail nicely with the three korbanos, and that would be possibly the reason why Rashi spells out the three expressions for us. Only problem is, Rashi doesn't say anything like that. It'd be really difficult to say that that's what Rashi is actually teaching us. But this is a weiter emes, because let's be honest, to get from Yivorechecha, Yoir, and Yisa to those three Karbanas is not something we would have worked out on our own. So if Rashi did have it in mind, he surely would have told us, because it's not obvious. And Rashi always clarifies those things that are not obvious. And the last thing we have to clarify about what Rashi says before we can put all the pieces together is in the next Rashi he quotes the word Vayered that Aaron came down, came down from where? He explains that it means that Aaron came down from the Mizbech. So he obviously brought Karbonos and now he comes down from the Mizbech. Or maybe Rashi is telling us something else. In Posuk the, the, the Pasuk already tells us clearly that Aaron came down from having brought the Chattos offering, etc. Needless to say, where did he do the Karbonos? Obviously on the Mizbech. So what's Rashi telling us that we don't already know <coughs> that Aaron came from the Mizbech? What would we not understand from the Pasuk? The Pasuk says he finished doing the Karbonos, he came down from where the Mizbech? Says Rashi, where did he come down from the Mizbech? Well, we know that already. <coughs> 
So far, my first question some of the commentaries want to suggest as the midfield Rashi Bavon and that Rashi's intention here is as Mazolnit Main and as the Vayerid is given Noch Vayevorachem that you shouldn't misunderstand the Pasuk and think that he came down after he gave them the Brocha. Vastamos is schwer because that would be a difficult chronology. Vosis Donagets of Detzel and Vegan Yeridas Aaron, why is it necessary for us to know that Aaron comes down from the Mizbeach? Since Doch Mover may love as Nach and Ferendekin Atlas is there are up gegangen. Surely it's logical. You finish what you have to do in a particular area, you leave that area. In this case, you come down off the Mizbeach. Now, the Vahiri is given me on the Mizbeach, therefore, the Mephorshim want us to know that coming off the Mizbeach, Vor Hot Makriv given the Korbonois, which indicates the place where he brought the korbanos. On Akrovas, Akrovas is given far via Vorachem, and he brought those korbanos before he blessed the Eden of it itself, for in the parasha, which the parasha actually spells out for us. On those main the Pesach, so the Reforshim say, that's what Rashi wants us to understand about the Pesach. Vayisa Goimer, vaya Vorachem. He raised his hands and he blessed the Jewish people. Eimosai, when did that occur? Miyad achar shayorad min amizbeach measoyz korbanay sein straight away after he came off the mizbeach having brought the korbanos. So Rashi, according to this mafurtim, is explaining the chronology. He gave the bracha, but only after he came down from the mizbeach. On their pirish is matimit and pirish atoyos kehanim meifem pasuk, and this commentary would fit perfectly with the medrash tores kehanim, which, as mentioned, is Rashi's source. What does the Medrash there say? Azar is a Pasuk Masuros. It's a Pasuk that isn't in the, in the easiest order to read. Rather, the easier way for the Pasuk to have been presented would have been that Aaron came off the Mizbeach having brought all of the Karbonis and then he raised his hands and blessed the people. And the concept of a, a Pasuk that is sometimes in an order that has to be rearranged in our minds to understand it is something Rashi has already discussed before. So the Mephoshim say, Rashi is going along the same lines as the Teras Kohanim. And Miyala Mizbech means to clarify for us, first he finishes the Karbonis, then he leaves the Mizbech, then he blesses the people. Except that doesn't really seem to be what Rashi is saying. About the few pirzets are is sorchi and gadol. This explanation actually raises a major issue. Well, first of all, noisif lo zeas dinim from mikra maseris is nit glatik and limud ader chapshat. Let's be honest. The concept of rearranging a pasuk to understand it is not your first go-to perspective, according to pshat. If Rashi did want us to know that his explanation is based on a rearrangement of the pasuk. Walter does gesagt beferish, he would have said so clearly. Adar pirush in Pasha Shmois, and not like he did in other places. But besides that, is oid veikra, there are more fundamental issues over here. Aleph number one, in the verta mi ala mizbeach, those words that say, that Rashi uses, that says he came down off the mizbeach, vacher Rashi git zu zum l'shayna pasuk, which are the words that Rashi effectively is inserting into the pasuk to help us understand it. Zeppin Kain Remes if Kain Zach. Those words actually don't tell us anything about order, etc. Nor an optage as the Vayered is given Malam Isbech. It's just an explanation. Vayered, where from the Misbech. Und der Minion, Zeppin in the Pasuk Gufa, and as we've mentioned, that is something the Pasuk already told us. Vayered Masay Sachatos Goimer Kenal. That Aaron came down from having done the chattas, etc. So if Rashi's intention is to explain that the Pasuk doesn't really read as it's presented, well, A, he should have told us, and B, all he's done for us is told us me'alam is be'ach, which is information we already know. But besides that, B'ez, a brocha is doch nitan avoidas mizbe'ach. A brocha is not one of the avoidas that you're meant to do on the mizbe'ach. Is when die Werte verheerd, wer sei es gömer, wo den Kral nicht gestanden. Let's assume that the Pasuk even hadn't told us that Aaron left the Mizbech having done all of the offerings. What wollt man euch gelernt, as der Weihe Wolchim is given, we still would have understood that the Bracha occurred noch am Feierendik in seinem Avoida an der Mizbech, after he completed all of his Avoida at the Mizbech, came a first Bekro, which the Pasuk told us, and we would have logically known that he finishes his avoider, which belongs on the Mizbech, so he comes off the Mizbech. You don't have to tell me that he came off the Mizbech, because there's no reason to believe that a bracha happens at the Mizbech, is there? So to bring up a 
what's going to explain all of this is we've got to understand what's going on over here in the nature of this bracha. First of all, when Rashi tells us that Aaron gave them the bracha of Birkas Kohanim, we made a mistake to believe that Rashi was telling us Aaron fulfilled the mitzvah of Birkas Kohanim. That's not what Rashi was saying. He just means those were the words that Aaron used in his bracha. Aaron was not fulfilling the mitzvah of Birkas Kahanim. So therefore, if it's not the mitzvah, we don't have to worry about his sons and we don't have to worry about Moshe. Rather, what's happening over here is Aaron completes his first day of service, inaugurating himself and the Mishkan, and now he wants to bless the Jewish people. Kid come on, we'll explain a little bit later why he wants to and what type of brach he wants to give them. So he has to choose a bracha to give. Which bracha does he choose? So for He chooses Birkas Kehanim. But the teichem from Birkas Kehanim is bepashtus matim to the zachen mit welche Aaron hat done hat done gewollt benchen eden. Why did he choose those words? Because they suited the theme of the bracha that Aaron wanted to give. So that's our first switch. He's not giving Birkas Kohanim because he was instructed to do so. Aaron wants to bench the Eden. He's choosing these words because they are best suited to the kind of bracha he wants to give. That's actually why Rashi tells us that the bracha has these three key words in it. Because as we'll learn a little bit later, these three words describe for us the intent of Aaron's bracha. Okay, so what is Aaron's bracha? Mit was Aaron hat gewalt benchen in demelt his movement past just like Pierce Rashi. Well, Rashi is pretty convinced that it's simple for us to know what intention Aaron has in his bracha. The mechuvan for Mishkan is dachim a ferish bikra. This is the time of the inauguration of the Mishkan. What is the purpose of the Mishkan? The Torah tells us clearly. Vaseli mikdash veshochanti besoicham. The purpose of the Mishkan is to have the divine presence part and parcel of the experience of the Jewish community. Starting first and foremost with the divine presence very visibly in the Mishkan. That's the intention. How do you get that to happen? How do you get the Shechina into the Mishkan? To activate the Shechina, you can't only do the regular service of the Mishkan that was done that day, the eighth day of inaugurating the Mishkan. Like the Pasuk says, what had to happen? The Pasuk says clearly, this is what you have to do. Then, then the Yibishter's presence will appear for you. In other words, was das meint wie Rashi's mit Forest die Carbonus war heute von Aaron. Rashi tells us clearly what is Zehadavar, the specific unique inaugural service of Aaron that's going to activate Shina in the base in the Mishka. For there is Kedai ve Khoshif why Aaron because he is the right person. Shall the day Carbonus so war wie das this is Rashi's language through his Carbonus, through his service tisch Shina bochem then the Shechina will dwell with you. And you will then recognize that they should chose Aaron as your representative. Now that helps us to understand why Aaron wants to bless the Yidden once he has finished his Avoida. After the Yidden finished constructing the Mishkan, we, dis- we see as Moshe had gebenched the Eden, at that time Moshe gave them a bracha, which was that in Hashem, in the future, the Shechina will dwell in the construction you have now made. As Durch Veosuli Mikdash, you fulfilled the first part of the instruction, make for me a Mishkan. You should now effect the result of that Mishkan, which is the Divine Presence resting with you. We made this understanding. From that we can understand. As we bald avoid us, Aaron via Mashmini is the avoid of us. Darf ufton the Ashras Ashkina before. We now know from the way Rashi explains out Davar that this is what you have to do. That Aaron's avoid on this special day, the eighth day of inauguration of the Mishkan. That's what's going to activate the Shechina in the space. 
Fotzig beim Sim von der Avoid Abrocho Twille, als sie so Pearls and Pulas und bringen Aschor aus der Schrinne befeuern. So Aaron does those steps, does that Avoid. It's only appropriate now that he gives a Brocha or prays that his Avoid should do what it is meant to bring the Schrinne into the space. This is the nature of Aaron's Brocha. Now, the Cherik Hemen of them fregen, I, you could ask a question. Hang on a second. Gleich noch birches Aaron, straight after Aaron's bracha, steht vay yavay Moshe v'aaron goyma vay voruches Aaron. We find that Moshe and Aaron together bless the people. And what bracha did they give? The Rashi teached us up. Rashi tells us. Amru vi noyem avay lekei no aleinu yihirotzen shetishre shchina b'maisi yadechem. They gave a bracha that the shchina should rest in the human, mish, human built mishka. Now, but Chayra, we bowed us. Berachas Aaron is given if Peinu and Ashur Sashchina. So now, one second, we're arguing that Aaron's bracha was to activate the presence of the Shechina in the Mishkan. Vavos hotmen denoch vider amol gedafta ma bracha if themsel benyanin. Why straight after that would Moshe and Aaron together ask for the same thing again? It's just in cash in it. That's not an issue. But those are in two bazundre inyan. In these two brachas, Aaron's bracha alone and the bracha of Moshe and Aaron together are two completely different concepts. Birchas Aaron is given for Abunu mit sein avoida protis. Aaron's brocha slash tefillah is linked to his personal part, his personal role in the Mishka. Azizel ufton ir piula in a minion from Ashos Ashkina befoil. His tefillah slash brocha is that his efforts should achieve their purpose, which is to activate the Shkina in the Mishka. And the right way to say that bracha is to use Birkas Kohanim as we're about to learn. Whereas the bracha of the combined Moshe and Aaron. After that bracha, which is a bracha that the shechina should rest in the product of the entire nation, not in the specific avoid of Aaron. Is a bracha klolis. That's a much broader kind of bracha. Also, seeing from kol klolis meleches vavoida samishkan, which is in a sense the summation of all of the efforts of all of the people through all of this time to make the mishkan. We does direct the chayes in the two halakim from the bracha. As you see, there's two components to the bracha. On the one hand, shetish shechina b'ma asay yedeichem in melechas hamishkan funidan. There's a bracha asking for the shechina to be in their handiwork. And we hear him avay lekenu oleinu, as well as to ask for the Eibushes' so-called benevolence with us in the avodim meshachal shmonesim mehamiluim, which is specifically asking for the shechina to be present in the inauguration week or eight days of the mishkan. Okay, what we're most focused on is Aaron's bracha and why it's Birkas Koyhanim. The time for us is to understand the avoid of the from Aaron to understand the avoid of the Shechina in Mishkan to understand this. Let's first ask, why is it that Aaron HaKoyen is the catalyst for bringing the Shechina into the Mishkan? Is that the Shechina has been given to them and has given the Kapora Gumura of Cheta Egel. Well, the reason for that is because the only way that you could really manifest the Shechina properly in the Mishkan is you first have to completely cleanse any vestige of the Cheta Egel. Rashi already told us this. Why is the Mishkan also called the Mishkan of Testimony? Rashi told us. It is a testimony to the Yidden that the Ebeshe was willing to forego the debacle of the Egel. How do you see that? Because he's willing to put his Shechina with the Jewish people. Um, Rashi brings that up in the pasuk Shlach Reze, and Rashi also says in the following pasuk, as when Eden had been gazed, not designed in May Hamiloim, that after seven days of inaugurating the Mishkan, when the Eden noticed, as is not as is not nitok in Asher as Hashchina, that the Hashchina wasn't yet apparent, Abba Zegetai, Abba Zegetai, they they started to complain. Kol atoyrach shetorachnu, all of this effort that we invested, shetishre Hashchina beinenu to manifest the Hashchina within us. Venei dashini skaper lo na avin ha'egel, and then we would know that the Eibush had atoned or forgiven the debacle of the Eigel, and we don't see the Hashchina. So it's really clear that in order for Asher as Hashchina to happen, first has to be a cleansing of the stain of the Eigel. Who could do that? And thus, that Aaron Pale given to Zain avoid the protis. Aaron is the catalyst to remove any vestige of the eagle. Was the far is the extra carbon from Aaron given? That's why Aaron's very first carbon that he brought was an eagle. Ben Lech Bokar Lechatos, a calf. 
that was brought as a chatz suffering. Says Rashi, Lo hidiya she mechaper lo ya kadosh baruch al yidei egel zeh, al maisa egel she osa. The intention of this calf was to indicate that the Ebeshter was using this calf as a symbol of the forgiveness of the calf that Aaron was very involved in producing. Now we understand. So Aaron is the one who has to be the catalyst for the Shekhinah to enter. Why? Because Aaron is the one who could smooth over the issue of the eagle because he was personally involved and he could be mechaper for it. And that brocha is, is uh, or that concept is illustrated and reflected in the brocha of Birkas Kehanim. That's how Rashi doesn't just tell us that Aaron chose the words of Birkas Kehanim as his brocha, but he tells us what those words are. Because those specific words of Birkas Kehanim, they illustrate the three major achievements that Aaron hoped to achieve with his brocha, which are Alef Yivorechecha. Yivorechecha means Er, the Eibishter zol der Benchen, that Hashem should bless you. The erste Sache ist, as die Broche is nicht von Aaronen. The first thing Aaron wants to illustrate to the Jewish people is, the Broche coming to you is not from me as an individual. Was demult is da not for Ataina, because in that case, let's assume Aaron was giving a Broche of his own volition. Well, there could have been some pushback to say, considering that Aaron was involved in the Egel Azov. We can er geben die Brocha so sein, der Schoss Hashchina, durch der Kapora, if Meiser ha Egel, the Jews could have scratched their heads and said, How would it make sense that Aaron would give the Brocha that the Shechina should be in the Mishkan, which is the sign of forgiveness for the Egel if Aaron was part of the problem? So therefore Aaron tells him, no, Aaron bet, as the Ebeshta alayn so benchen in Yevorechecho. So therefore Aaron's first request is, Ebeshta, you blessed Eden. And the bracha you give will be a bracha that not only brings Shekhinah into the space, but clears up all of the murk, the murkiness of the Egel. So what's the bracha that you Eibishter should give? And the Teichna bracha is two things. Base. Yo'er, illuminate. Azalzayin Ashras HaShekhinah. Yo'er, illumination, that refers to the Shekhinah being present. Ha'oras ponin dilamayla. It's like the Eibishter's face shining into the space. Mirashi touched up, as Rashi explains later in Pasha's Nosei, that Yo'er means Yar el Chopanim Soich Kois Panim Tzuhuvoi, that the Ebrisha should show you a happy, radiant face. Okay, Dei says, "Okay, Nimshach Verin the Aras Panim and Ashoras Achshchina Bet Aaron," and then Aaron says, "And how can we guarantee and ensure that this Ashoras Achshchina will actually manifest in a in a way that relates to every single person?" For that, you need the Bracha of Yisa. As the Ebrisha says, "I know you say of and Yisa is from the expression no say of to carry and overlook our averes." Where Rashi touched up, as Rashi again explains there in Parshas Nosei, that Yisa means Yichpoish Kasa that the Ebrisha will overcome any anger, so to speak, that he has against us. Or Mechapes Zaynei Favoyin Ho Egel and atone for the Egel. So now we're seeing clearly what's happening over here. This is the moment of Ashura Sashchina. Aaron is the person who has to make it happen. Why Aaron? Because he has the power to be Mechaper from the Egel. And the brocha that he's giving is that you should see clear Kapara and absolute manifestation, manifestation of Shechina. A piece of that information that I have understood of on a search in the Dibra Maschel Shalach Rezev I heard me alam is beach. With that information, we can understand what Rashi really means to tell us when he specifies that Aaron came down from the Mizbeach. Rashi meant kepashtus l'shoinoi, not like the Mephoshim who wanted to explain that Rashi is explaining to us that the Pasuk doesn't read the way that it should. Rather, it's face value. As Aaron is there, stand noch vayevorechem arop yegangen from the Mizbeach, major chidosh over here. That actually Rashi wants us to know that Aaron only left the Mizbeach after giving the people the bracha. Even though earlier we said bracha is not an avoid, you wouldn't expect it to be on the Mizbeach. Well, apparently it was. It actually emerges that Aaron wanted specifically to extend this bracha to the Yidden while still on the Mizbeach. On the midmacht macht Rashi klar. Now that we know, according to Rashi, that the bracha occurred on the Mizbech, that helps us clarify what Rashi said in the previous one. Well, if, if Aaron is giving this bracha while he's at the Mizbech, it clearly cannot be the mitzvah of Birkas Kahanim as it is normally done. 
Valdemalt, Vaults in a given from his bear. Because if it was the mitzvah of Birkas Kahanim, there is absolutely no reason why the mitzvah of Birkas Kahanim would ever be done on the Mizbeach. Now, it's given a brochem yechidus for Nara. But rather, Rashi is now going right through from the same perspective. This is a unique brocha that Aaron's giving that is only relevant at that time. This brocha is specifically linked to the unique inaugural service that Aaron was doing on the Mizbech that would never be repeated. Why? Because the purpose of this brocha is the avoid I have just completed should work. That would explain why Aaron wants to say the brocha ASAP as soon as he finishes his avoida while he's still on the Mizbeach. And that is also part of what Rashi wants to illustrate clearly to us by telling Vayered he went down from the Mizbech. What's he telling us? We already mentioned that the Torah did tell us that he went down from having done his avoid. Now if you read that at face value, Kumtois, you'll understand as the Posuk will say as Aaron hot verendek sein avoida. Vayered me'asois means he finished his avoida of bringing carbonos. Mitasias achatas goyma, which involved the various carbonos that he brought. Vert lefizeshver. Now, if you read it at face value, you'll have a question. Aaron had doch shein frigendik de carvasa carbonos. Aaron already finished bringing the carbonos earlier. And vavos zok te posak esh do vayerid maasois goymer. Why does the posak only now tell us that he left his post? He finished the Avoida. That was already recorded in the Psukim a little bit earlier. Why is he still on the Mizbech and only coming down now? What is Rashi? Before Rashi explains. As Kavonis HaKosov is Nitzit that Tzelen as Vayered Maaseis Chatos Gomer Azot Fendik De Avoida Nor Vayered Ma'an La Mizbech. That's what Rashi wants us to know. When it says that he came down, it doesn't mean he came down having now completed his avoida. It means he came down from the Mizbech where he stayed a little bit longer after completing his avoida. The Pasuk is Eisun to Zogan Azesh Noch Vayavorchim is Vayered Me'ala Mizbech. That's exactly what the Pasuk wants us to know. That he didn't leave the Mizbech as soon as he finished the Korbanos. He left the Mizbech after doing something else, namely this special bracha that he extended. You could almost read it as if the Pasuk had said, that the main thing the Pasuk wants us to know is, Aaron came off the Mizbech, having done everything he wanted to do on the Mizbech, including the Brocha. And the fact that the Pasuk continues to say, having completed the different Korbonis, that's parenthetical. Which actually contextualizes how Aaron got to be on the Mizbech in the first place. Not that we should think he ascended the Mizbech in order to give the Brocha. He ascended the Mizbech to bring Karbonis. He finished the Karbonis. He didn't leave the Mizbech. Why? Because he still wanted to give a Brocha, which was directly related to his Avoida, the, the Brocha. That his Avoida should have its impact and cause Hashra Sashkina. And after having done that, then he left the Mizbech, which he only entered because he was bringing Karbonis. And and realistically, we can understand now that we can't learn anything about what Rashi feels the practical halachas of Brikas Kohanim are based on this pasuk. For example, in the time of the Beis Hamikdash, do you say Brikas Kohanim before you bring the parts of the Tamid offering onto the Mizbech or afterwards? We don't know from this pasuk, even though it says Vayered Maasoi Sachatos. We've now illustrated Vayered Maasoi Sachatos is not a timeline. And plus, Rashi here saying Birkas Kahanim is neat of Kim Mitzvah's Birkas Kahanim, as we mentioned right at the beginning. It's not that Rashi is suggesting that here Aaron was fulfilling the Mitzvah of Birkas Kahanim, rather that Aaron chose to use this formula for the Brocha he wanted to extend. His intention with this Brocha was nothing to do with Birkas Kahanim, it was specific to the unique of. Of that day. 
בקשר, ונאז עשים, זה זה נעבוד המיוחדת, פנשמיני למילואים כנ"ל, it was related to, and it was the summation of his very specific and unique avoida on that eighth day of inaugurating the Mishkan. אבל אני דרך כיסא, אבל on the other hand, אף על פי אז ברכסיים דן, איז גוון עניין מיוחד פון ינם טוג, in spite of the fact that as we've made very clear, the ברוכה הארן גיבס, even though it's the words of Brikos Kahanim, is a unique bracha, unique to that day. But it is not a bracha that effects were limited to that day. Rather, it continues to have an impact until today. Because Aaron's avoida, which culminated with the bracha we've now learned about, the impact of Aaron's Avoida and his Brocha was the return of a, an exiled divine presence back into this world. The divine presence had been banished because of human behavior. And when Aaron returns the Shechina, The impact is that the Shechina is always now within our reality. Therefore, we can all consistently draw strength from Aaron's Brocha. Even at night, which is a time you're not allowed to say Brikas Kohanim. And even outside of Eretz Yisrael, where the Brikas Kohanim is far less common than in Israel, where you bench every day. Aaron's Brocha galvanizes us to be able to make it through the darkness and difficulties of Godless. To the extent that we can manifest the Shechina in a revealed way. Shechina is with us, we just don't see it. We can activate the Gilei Shechina in the Beis HaMikdash HaShlishi, which will manifest in the third Beis HaMikdash, which should be, please God, rebuilt immediately for us.